Hello and welcome back to Polytoots. In today's video we're going to be looking at how very simple shaders that all share the same basic principles can be used to make a lot of amazing things. Like if you wanted the sail of a boat to bellow in the wind, or you wanted to paint colors on an object without using any textures and worrying about UVs, or add snow, moss, or other extrusions to an object. Or maybe you just want some basic animation or the ability to reduce objects to a singularity. I'm talking about the almighty Vertex, and we'll be covering all of these examples. As usual, the final shader graphs and amplify versions, plus all examples you see here, are freely available over on my Patreon. And with that said, I really appreciate any of you who do support me over there. Also worth mentioning, we're using URP for this. Uh, should probably be the same setup in other pipelines though. So let's crack on with the first shader, the sail. I'll also just create a material from this shader by right-clicking it, and I'll chuck this on our sails. The fundamental part of manipulating verb positions in Shader Graph comes from the position node. With this set to object, we can multiply it by a value, plug it into the vertex position slot, and begin to affect an object's scale based on its own pivot. Now that's all fine and dandy, but we're going to need a bit more control than just scaling our object, and that's where the normal vector comes into play. Again, we're going to set this to object and add it into our position node. The multiplier here will act as our filter for whatever we want to hook into it. For example, if I just set this to a regular float value like before, you can see that we're not just scaling the object, we're instead pushing the normals of the verts outward. If you compare this to when we just changed the position node, you should get a better idea as to what's going on. With this new information, we can begin to create something a bit more suitable for the effect that we're going for. I won't be going over everything in great detail, but remember that all the final files are freely available over on the Patreon. So let's get this up and running. We need to push the sail outwards, which we're already doing to be fair, but we must try to constrain the corners so that the whole thing stops blowing off. We can do this with a spherical mask that's pretty simple to create if you start by splitting the red channel of a polar coordinates node and flipping it inside out. The main reason this will work is because I know the UVs of my sail are pretty much filling up my UV space. So if I were to mask out the corners of a square, it will also mask out the corners of my sail. After tweaking the mask scale, we can see some good progress. Certainly not realistic, but real life these days is an absolute mess, so let's just all stay in imagination land, eh? And from this point on, we can easily add in some extra finesse, like getting rid of that peaky spot by using a power note to soften the result. We can also create some hacky normals from this by using the normal from height node, so the shading is a bit more accurate as we increase the wind. And of course, we can throw in some noise and jitteriness so that as the wind power gets stronger, it also flaps about like a uh, like a bird. I mean, birds do flap, but they, they don't do this. And that's pretty much it for the magic behind the sail. On this example, I also enable backface rendering as my sails are a one-sided mesh. Next up, we'll look at some simple vertex painting. In this example, we're just going to be creating a basic shader that's compatible with uh, vertex painting tools, but you can absolutely extrapolate this information out to include textures and not just colors. I have two older tutorials on the channel that cover this. They should hopefully still be relevant. The first thing we're gonna to want to do is install Polybrush from the package manager window. This is included with Unity, so you don't need to download anything you know, outside. Just go to the Unity registry, find Polybrush, and install it. As an aside, if you somehow reach this point without having Shader Graph installed, this is also where you can do that. You should see Polybrush up in the Tools menu now, and if I open that, click on the Vertex Painting option, and try to paint on a mesh, you'll see that it doesn't like that because no material on this object is compatible. So let's fix that. Make a Shader Graph as usual, make the material, slap it on whatever you want, then just look for the Vertex Color node, plug it into your base color slot, and you're done. Okay, so we can probably make this a bit more interesting. At the moment, it's still very cool, and I hope your minds are sufficiently blown, but there is one extra channel we're not using at the moment, and that's the alpha. You can hook this into whatever you want, within reason. Smoothness, metallic, the actual alpha, uh, even ambient occlusion. In fact, you could even go back to your 3D software and bake the AO to your vertex colors alpha, and use that instead of having to paint it. Neat. So on to the next one, getting some snow or moss or whatever to pile up on our objects. This effect definitely works best if you have more geometry to work with. That said, the mesh I'm using has enough to do what we want. 
And if you're thinking, oh boy, that's a nice bench, I wish I could get my hands on something like that, then you, my friend, are in luck because this comes from a new website called thebasemesh.com, which offers completely free assets that you can do what you want with. This isn't sponsored content or anything, it's just a new thing and I, re I really like it. The meshes are also super clean and come with some basic UVs, so yeah, you know, just, just go check it out. They also have a Discord and accept requests, within reason, probably. Anyway, uh, the bench, right. So we've seen how to push our meshes out based on their normals, and that's exactly what we need to do here, but to also mask it in a way that only parts of the mesh are affected and in only one direction. We can do that with a setup like this. We're just splitting out the Y normal vector, which is the up direction in Unity, multiplying it for an initial value to start the buildup, and another value down here in the power, which will act as a ramp or fall off. So for the extrusion, we can just feed this into the same setup we had in our sail shader. Then we can take our Y mask, plug it in, and hook it into the vertex position slot. And here's a familiar issue. What's happening here is the mesh is being split based on our normals, meaning if we have any hard edges, it's going to split the mesh. If you can't or won't go back to your 3D software to fix this, we can do it in Unity by selecting the object, changing the normals type from import to calculate, and just blast the smoothing angle up. As an aside, if you did want meshes with hard normals and to also not have them split when we do this, then you could use normal maps so the mesh itself will all have the same smoothing angle, but your normal map texture is what will give the illusion of hard edges. I have another video that uses that technique if you're feeling like boosting my metrics today. So that's the basics of this, and then it's just about adding nice little refinements like throwing in a minimum node with a small value that we can use to make sure the, uh, the buildup stops at a certain point. We can also sort out the colors. Having one property for your base color, which could also be a texture, and another color property for the buildup, which could also be a texture. I've multiplied this by 5 from the initial mass because that way the, uh, the buildup color appears much quicker as opposed to, you know, like waiting until like maxing out the extrusion. Lastly, if you don't want an even color, like for the moss example, we can multiply in some simple noise here, and as a bonus, we can use a boolean with a branch to make this a checkbox on the material. To be fair, it also gives quite a nice frosty look for the snow example too. Alright, on to the next one, some basic animation. The most common use cases for things like this are fish swimming or foliage swaying about. We've technically already covered this with the sail example, but this time we'll use a different approach. To begin with, we need to make a mask that will scroll across this fish. We could use its own UVs for this like we did with the sail, but instead we'll make it so that it can make any fish or object swim. So for this setup, we'll start with the position node and make sure it's set to object. Then we'll just split out the R channel and feed it into a multiply with a float. This is going to give us a gradient mask across our object. Next up, we feed this into a sign, and this is probably the most important node of this setup in that it allows us to have multiple waves of white lines. So I'll go ahead and turn this float into a property so we can access it on the material. Now we just need to get it to move across the fish, and with that we use a classic recipe of time multiplied by a value. Again, I'll make sure this is a property. I'll also tack on another multiply and a float property to this. We can use that to control the overall strength of our wiggle. Shadergraph really likes position nodes to be used at the end, even if you're already using them somewhere else in your chain, so we'll do that. Set it to object like usual, and this time we'll split this on the red and green. This is because my fish's sideways vector is the Z, which is the blue channel. So I need to keep RNG as they are. And for the blue channel, I'll add all this mask stuff we just made with the B of the split, and then feed that into the B of the combine, and that's it. We'll output the RGB3, stick it into the vertex position slot, play with some of the material values, and call it a day. Alright, what's left? Uh, okay, singularities. Cool. So we should all know by now that if we were to just multiply our object's position with a single value, we can scale the object based on its pivot. And if that's all you need, then more power to you. You get to leave the class early. For all the cool kids out there though, let's get rid of all that and make something better. I'm going to start in a similar way to the fish by creating a mask that will move up our objects. We do that with this simple setup of splitting the G of a normal vector. That's the Y position, you know, X, Y, Z, RGB. You get the gist and one minusing it before we add in our slider property. 
As you can probably tell though, by doing this, we're already starting with the mask halfway up the objects. And I'm not a glass half full sort of guy, so we're gonna need to remap this value so it starts a little earlier. Minus two should do it. Now we have a mask that will go all the way up from nothing. The reason I'm making this is when it comes time to collapse the mesh, I don't want to do it like all in one go. Instead, I'd like to affect the mesh gradually, like with a gradient. We can move on to the actual collapsing now, just like society. We should saturate the result we have so far, and then multiply in a position node set to object, and then another multiply after that to control its direction. Technically, it's like a strength, but if you tell something to do like minus a strong thing, then you're going to get a weak thing. Lastly, we need to add another position node onto this at the end before we hook it into the vertex offset. And there we go. If we set the direction to minus one, we now have the objects splitting and collapsing down to their pivot points. From this point on, it's just a case of adding whatever you want. In the example that you'll find on Patreon, I've thrown in some noise, which masks out the objects with alpha and also makes the effect a bit more wobbly. There is of course the glow, and as one final little treat, we can change the type of collapsing to be based on a world position, so you can set which points things collapse to. Full disclosure though, I was only able to get this working on the Amplify version. I tried for far too long to port this one little detail over to Shadergraph, but it just wasn't having it. I'm sure it must be possible, so if there's anyone out there who can crack that one, I'm all ears. So that will be that. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget that both Shadergraph and Amplify versions, plus all files, including some fantastic free meshes from thebasemesh.com, are available for download over on my Patreon. Check the description for any relevant links. Uh, yeah, peace out, and I will see you in the next one.